Bill the Flavor Guy, we're talking about flavor extracts today. Why use a flavor extract over other types of flavors, like a concentrate or emulsion or a powder flavor? So flavor extracts are made by taking the flavor oils of, in this case, an orange. And what you do is you press out all the oils from the orange, using the entire orange and the peel, of course, and you're left with all these different oils. But when we put it inside the alcohol and the water to make the extraction, what are we doing? What we're trying to accomplish is we want to get rid of all those bitter notes. When we extract the oils in that alcohol and water, we see the oils rise up through the mixer, thoroughly mixed in, but over a period of hours and days, the oils separate out and float to the top. And the ones that are soluble in the alcohol and the water, they go back in. They stay in some of them and some continue to come out of that little thin layer at the top. And that's what we're after. Those are the really clean notes. They're fresh, clean, they're a lot of top notes. And they're really good for making beverages, but they're not good at baking because they're also very volatile, like the alcohol that they're in, and they evaporate quickly. So a lot of old school formulas use extracts for everything from baking to beverages to making ice cream. And, and that was all they had. They didn't have the science of making flavors. And today we have both art and science. And that's what we try to do at Nature's Flavors, just kind of blend those two together. So that way you can be more specific. You get the right flavor for the right application. You can make a flavor do just about anything, but it won't be the best use of the flavor. You won't get the peak results that you want. So an extract is best if it's used in a beverage application or a cold application. So ice cream or sorbet. There's a problem with using extracts in an ice cream because ice cream needs to freeze. And if there's alcohol in the extract, that causes problems with the uh, freezing temperatures. It basically means you have to bring the ice cream down to an even lower temperature to get it to be that texture or that uh, firmness that you normally would get with a more water-based application. In fact, it's best if there's no alcohol in an ice cream application or sorbet. But that said, you can make some really awesome flavors. Now with vanilla extract, it's already assumed you're gonna use a vanilla extract if you're making a natural vanilla ice cream. You're gonna have some alcohol in there and you can compensate for that by using a really strong extract, not one that's just uh, weak on the beans, but something that's got a well-rounded uh, background of uh, vanilla beans. And in a sorbet, I actually like extracts, uh, especially if you're using real fruit in the application as well. So like if I were making an orange sorbet, I would use an orange extract, a little bit of orange juice, and then of course my normal uh, sugar or non-nutritive sweetener, uh, depending on what your, uh, your like is. So extracts, not good for baking, really good for cold applications, really good for beverages that are gonna be clear you don't want any cloudiness to them. Also, you can use a flavor concentrate in a beverage application, but you're gonna have some cloudiness and you're also gonna have some ringing possibly. So when you're trying to make a beverage where you don't want any cloudiness or you don't want ringing, you absolutely have to use an extract. Otherwise, you have to weight the oils down. And that gets into a, a whole bunch of crazy uh, chemicals sometimes to get that accomplished and you don't want to eat that stuff. So it's best to just uh, use the right flavor for the right application. Extract percentages. So because you're washing away a lot of the terpenes and the waxy, heavy, and bitter uh, characters of the flavor, you also are, are left with a lot of the middle and high notes of the flavor. For that reason, you tend to have to use a little more. So your usages can start out at a quarter of a percent to a half a percent and go up from there. Always start low. Remember, three to five seconds is the longest you want that flavor to be tasted in the palate and in the nose. Remember, flavor also is always in the nose. You don't taste flavor in your mouth. Anyone that tells you that is just not true. Anyone who's had a cold, I think that would be everybody, knows that flavors don't taste good when you have a cold or a flu. You taste temperature, mouthfeel, sweet, sour, salt, bitterness, spicy, hot, but you don't taste the flavor. Just all the potentiators. I like coffee. 
Cream and sugar are potentiators and make coffee for me taste really good. But without the cream and sugar, the coffee just doesn't bloom. And it's the same thing with flavors. Without all those other enhancements that are tasted in the mouth, the flavor doesn't bloom. This is Bill the Flavor Guy, and I hope I answered your questions about flavor extracts today. For more information on our flavors and flavor products, visit us at naturesflavors.com.